am I afraid to tell these people certain things because I'm afraid of them talking down my ideas? Yeah, I'm going to be multimillionaire. I'm going to be free. I'm going to work on the things that I want to work on. And no one's. I'm never going to swap my time for money. In eight weeks from, from a standing start, you went to being a fully paid YouTuber where you could actually live and you're earning more money than your full-time job. That in itself is like unheard of. I'd say that our story is is in a way one of the rare overnight successes but what happened before we started that was a long and painful process and a journey for myself key things about this podcast that i love about it is the fact of like i just feel like it gives people permission to break the patterns in their life that do not serve them yeah. in every area of their life welcome back to the latest edition of the frankie lee podcast and i'm coming to you live in the new year from the new destination I'm in right now, I'm in, obviously, I'm in sunny England to all of you listening in Australia. And I've got the man, the myth, the legend, the guy who went from literally a cameraman working in TV to Dad V Girls on YouTube, blowing it up to like 1.3 million, clothing brand, looking after like five, six women like on, on, on his YouTube videos. The guy's done mad things. Joel, welcome to the show. Thank you. What? What an intro, mate! I'm, I want to come I'm just for the intro. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm 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 hyped for it, mate! I'm hyped for it. When we came to your um your little what, what should we call this warehouse? Yeah, we call it like the warehouse studio office. It's multi purpose space that kind of like it, fulfills all our different needs. Because it, it, it's in because just to give people a bit of context, because we're in the Docklands at the, at the back end of London, so to speak. Yeah, when you walk in, it doesn't look like it is inside. When it, you're outside, it looks like a without swearing, it looks like a crap hole outside. And then it looks like you're going to get murdered, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, um, and then you walk in and yeah, like we've made the space our own. In fact, we're about to completely refurb it to make it like just sick because we're yeah. going to start our own podcast as well. So we're going to have a podcast set here. We use this space for, um, for our clothing line. We do all the photo shoots here. We also work as a team here. I mean, this desk, this is our working desk. There's like four of us in the team. At one point, we were doing the fulfillment for the clothes from here, so we were literally picking and packing the orders and sending them out to customers. But, you know, we outgrew the space pretty quick and outsourced that. So, yeah, it's a pretty multifunctional space. I've always wanted a space like this, actually. It's actually once, uh, a couple of years ago, I put it on my vision board. I was like, I just I want like a warehouse creative kind of studio space. I love the and fact then, that you're using vision boards, and I'm sure further along the track we'll, we'll, we'll talk into that. But do you know where I want to start with you? Is the fact of like you you went from you went from literally working a job as a doing doing cameraman, doing all that kind of stuff in TV, pretty normal, pretty normal working job, which most people could get access to that are creatives. And you went from that, and in eight weeks from from a standing start, you went to being a fully paid YouTuber where you could actually live and you're earning more money than your full time job. That in itself is like unheard of. Walk me through the whole process of you. Um, I suppose you you must have got to a point where you were bored of your job or some yeah. some 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 tr some switch in your head went and you decided to change the life. And yeah. I just want to feel that. I'd say that our story is is in a way one of the rare overnight successes. But what happened before we started that was a long and painful process and a journey for myself. So um, I'd say like my, my journey of like entrepreneurship really started the day, the day that I read Rich Dad Poor Dad. That book changed my life. Like it's, I think I must've been about 21 when I read that. And before that, my ambitions for life were become as good a cameraman as I possibly can, become as good an editor as I possibly can and get a really well-paid job at, I don't know, BBC, ITV or something. Those were my ambitions. I read Rich Dad Poor Dad. I was like, I never want a job. I never, ever want to work a job ever again. That changed a lot for me. That really opened my eyes. But that was then like a long process of trying to figure out what does that look like? How can I actually do that? And then that journey was was quite long and then when we settled on the idea of doing the youtube it was it was a pretty quick how did, it was pretty quick how did, how did rich dad poor dad though how did that book which is predominantly about obviously learning what an asset and a liability is how did how did ever you... trading your time for money is what i got from that book right okay this, trading your yeah. time for money is there's no leverage that book is about you know that book for me Obviously, it talks about liabilities and assets and stuff like this. But that book for me really opened my eyes. Like, 
if I'm always swapping my time for money, or there's a real ceiling to what I could earn. I'm never going to have any sort of freedom. So I remember, I remember like just just reading that book and being like, <coughs> for the first time ever, I was like, no, nah, actually, I'm going to be multimillionaire. I'm going to be free. I'm going to work on the things that I want to work on. And no one's, I'm never going to swap my time for money. That was what opened my eyes from that book. Yeah, I like it. And I always, like, because I've read a lot, a lot of books. And uh, people always say to me, like, you know, oh, like, uh, friends and family and stuff who might be a bit, like, lost. Of, like, well, I want to do something similar. It's like, well, where do you start? It's like, well, I just start reading books. And I always say, like, read Rich Dad Poor Dad. It's an easy read. It's so easy. It's so enjoyable. It's a story format. Like, literally, a kid could read it. And it will kind of hopefully open your eyes to what is possible. So, well, yeah. I think I think the the benefit of reading Rich Dad Poor Dad is if if you went to school and you were doing business studies, I reckon you'd learn more from re- reading Rich Dad Poor Dad than you would from studying business studies for the whole for, for the whole two or three years that you study it. Hundred percent. Don't even get me started on education system. But yeah, I would, like I just think the whole thing is just completely broken. It serves a purpose, but the it doesn't serve. The people going through the system. Well, it's, it's ridiculous. It, the the purpose I feel that education system serves is like it's great for doctors, accountants, yeah. nurses, and all that kind of stuff. What that, percent of people is that? Yeah, you know. So, yeah, we need those people, and those people do need um, degrees and stuff. So, yeah, but you're putting everyone else through the same system to get those people. So, like, you can't meet people's needs, like. But 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 the education system isn't there to meet people's needs. The education system is there to create workers in yeah. the workforce, and and it's created to 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 put it. You, the whole narrative, in my opinion, is created to want you to get this house, which puts you in debt. So you go and get a job, and you have to continue working to pay the debt off that you've got on this one dwelling that you pay off. Yeah. Hopefully, when you're sixty five, and by then you've got no life and you're left to live. And that's exactly what Rich Dad Poor Dad talks about, you know, and you're in the rat race and they got you. They've literally got you. I was talking to someone yesterday, people going to uni and stuff and like he, this guy's in uh, property and he employed this, this young kid um, who just come out of uni and he was like, uh, after, I don't know how many months, like the guy came to him and said, I, I just can't, he, that, he's got a degree, he's like, I can't do it. I'm failing at the job. Like he just didn't have life skills and didn't have people skills and he quit and he was crying. And then I, we were talking about it and I was like, yeah, because like what he learned at uni is just, you know, it, it's, it's not, not life applicable. skills. And now he realizes at the age of like whatever he is, like 23, that he has no life skills and there's other people out there who've been working, got these skills. And I said, I bet he went back to uni to do like further education. He went, yeah, he went, he then said, I'm going to go back and get my master's when, because he's putting off life. He knows how to be a student. They taught him how to be a student. How to get into debt. And how to get into debt. So now all these kids are leaving uni. Like he was talking about someone like they've got 80 grand worth of um, student debt. And they're like, no, don't worry because you don't pay it off until you're earning this much. And then they just take it off of you each month. And then someone said, oh, well, what about if you like want to get a mortgage and you've got all this debt and they're like, no don't worry because they still let you get a mortgage they won't recognize the student loan debt and i'm like yeah because then they can get you in more debt and it's just the yeah, whole it, thing is just wild it blows my mind it, that they won't even teach you at school how to do your taxes but they'll teach you about algebra the periodic table the peri- when am i ever going to need the periodic table in my life unless i'm a scientist how many kids in my class in my school went on to use the periodic table they literally like rammed it down our throat. And I'm like, but then I get out into the real world. And I'm like, how do you do taxes? I don't understand this. Why don't you teach me this at school? How did you not teach me how to budget, time management, useful skills? You could have really set me up for life. And you were banging on about Shakespeare and this and that. And I don't, you wasted my time. <laughs> Sorry, that's why I said don't get me started on education. Like, because I just No, rant. because it's, it's something I agree with, Joel. Because at the end of the day, like there's, there's, the most important thing that people can learn to get is 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 learn how to get someone's attention, and then when you've got their attention, learn learn how you can add value to their life, so you can, so that you can sell them something predicated on the attention that you have. Is pretty much the skills that you should be learning, yeah. because at the end of the day, 
the the most highly profitable job in the world if you're going to have a job is sales like that's the only job where you can actually work for someone else where you can actually become financially free in my opinion yeah. where, where, where you've got uncapped potential is sales yeah like if you're going to have a job be a salesperson don't do it there's no other job that i would personally do i understand that there's people that listen to this that might care for people so they want to be nurses understand then if you're going to care for people and be a nurse, you're never going to be rich and financially free in most cases, in 99% of cases. that Having having that conversation with yourself real early doors and being able to accept that is is really important. I think the thing is, is self-awareness is so key. Like um, people that, people that are entrepreneurs at heart, but uh, put themselves in a nine to five and accept that life, that's wrong. People that are actually nine to fivers, that try and put themselves into an entrepreneur life because that's what they've now been told with the new information. You've got to be really self-aware about who you are, what's right for you, not what's worked for someone yeah. else. And, you know, we're all different. We need workers. We need businessmen. We can't have all businessmen. We can't have all workers. But it's about that. On The, 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 the key thing there is it's about the honest conversation you have with yourself and, ha- and, and how that looks for you. And there's no yeah. right or wrong answer. Yeah. I mean, obviously, look, I would love everyone that listens to this podcast to go out and be their own person and to go out into the world and this, that and the other. But if you're a nurse listening to this, know that like me and Joel, especially like we appreciate what you do. hundred like, percent. And there's a yeah. lot of people out there who appreciate what you do, but just understand if you're going to be a nurse who's, who cares for people and swaps their time for money, you've got to, you've got to figure out another way on the side of that, that allows you to stack and bank cash, whether it's a side hustle or whatever it is, so that you can go and so you can just do nursing because you care for people, not because you need money. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh, so you, 100%. Yeah. So you can stack some assets and, and start to move things on. Absolutely. So so obviously you've you've had that big revelation then at that point with that, reading that book. That's taught you, okay, I'm not leveraging my time in the right manner. Mm. So what was, so you, you go back to your family and you say, hey girls, um, you go to Sarah, like, I want to start this YouTube channel and this is my idea and I want to involve the whole family. Yeah. And how do you... But there was a, so reading the... Uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad book at 21 starting the YouTube channel at like 31 obviously a big gap in big between. gap yeah huge amount of learning to do huge amount of learning to do about myself discovering <coughs> that I had ADHD um, and various other things and then eventually getting to the point where it was like I like my so the way that I looked at my job which although I was freelance I had like one main client that kind of contracted me which was like my bread and butter, and then I had my freelance work. I was being paid um, well for what my job was. It was pretty good. And I was like, this is golden handcuffs. Like, It's comfortable, it's regular money, and it's good money. And uh, one of my contractors actually, um, I don't think I've ever shared this, but they actually offered to uh, give me a pay rise on what I was um, doing there. Because I wasn't an employee, but I was sort of an employee, but I was still self-employed, if that makes sense. So yeah, I was like, yeah. as good as an employee. And they said about, um, they were going to give me a pay rise, and I actually turned it down. <laughs> and I said, I don't want it. And they was like, what? what? Why don't you want it? I was like, it would just make it harder for me to ever really go on to do what I want to do. And they knew, like, I, I wasn't happy, and I wanted to move on from what I was doing. But I actually was like, oh, yeah, I turned it down. I said, no, thanks. Because I just realised that there's, there's probably a lot of people watching this and like, they might have a really good job but they're not happy and they know that there's so much more out there for them but the more comfortable you get in that and the more well you do it's literally i'm think casey neistat the youtuber he explained it in a video and he said about golden handcuffs and i was like so right so anyway sarah my wife she always knew like i'm always going home i want to do something outside of this i want to do something i want to really like go for it She's always been supportive, but she's like, well, what? And then a few different things happened in my life where it's like I listened to a podcast, had a YouTuber on it. My kids are watching YouTube. And then I'm thinking, what do I want to do in my life? Like, I love making videos. Like, I love being creative. Uh, I love spending time with my family. And then we'd go on these holidays. We'd make, like, home movies. We'd come home. We'd watch them. Everyone would be like, oh, they're so good. And then even a friend said, oh, you should do that for a living. I went, you can't can't make money off that and then it sort of started to dawn on me like you can you could take two things you're really passionate about making videos spending time with family and you could actually make a career out of it so 
we I said to Sarah like I'm gonna this is what I want to do I want to leave what I'm doing now keep a small portion of the freelance stuff to pay the bills keep the lights on but I feel like if I don't kind of burn my bridges then I've if I've got a plan b yeah you know plan a is not going to work so you know so I spoke to that main employer and I said look I'm going to leave you know I'm going to do my own thing I've got enough freelance work to pay the bills Sarah's like she's so supportive I never would have been able to do anything without her she was like look if we have to eat beans on toast every night for dinner however long like I believe in you I believe in the vision that you've got for it let's make it work so we said right spoke as a family does everyone want to do this like is this what we want to do yeah cool I was like it's going to take I don't know it might take a year before we even see anything um so let's just do it and then we did it within about four weeks like a few of our videos just started going viral within eight weeks got picked up by a management company they helped us start doing brand deals YouTube started paying us on the AdSense suddenly we're like mate that's amazing yeah so but, 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 but one of the pivotal points there that I think maybe not all of us have access to at the moment in our lives but I mean I don't have it have access to it but I think it's something that's pivotal in your life it's the fact of like how pivotal was it that Sarah your missus obviously supported you and could see that your your vision in that moment because she's thinking about this guy's got to put food on the table for me and me and my children and you've yeah. come with this idea and it's a risk and and a lot of women whether they believe it or not are are skewed towards safety right so talk to me about how that was pivotal in that moment she's she's literally been crucial fundamental in in everything because because of her support and her belief in me that we wouldn't be here now you know we wouldn't be sitting here in this place like if I if if I had a wife that was which I understand why wives would be this way hey let's slow down let's think about this you know a bit more like this is too risky not believing in it like you know I never would have done it you know I needed that support and I needed that belief and it was like why not you know you only get one life and she was like why not if you know if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't we'll figure something else out like I do speak to other people and they'll they'll say like, oh, I've I've got this idea or whatever, but and their girlfriend or their wife kind of shuts it down or you know, it's a bit yeah. too risky or whatever. And I'm like, I, I I don't know what to say to them because I don't have the experience and I, I think in my head like, I don't know how I would do I don't know what I would do in that situation. I don't know how I'd get past that. I don't know I wouldn't even know what to say. I almost want to be like find a new partner i had a similar i was seeing this seeing this girl and i really fucking liked her in australia right really liked her. i had a lot of time for her and i still i still i still have a lot of time for her like i still think she's a beautiful girl but i seen this girl and it was after the after i just filmed a podcast with bill sparks and uh i was buzzing mate my, my you know i'm just buzzing my lights off and she comes around my house and she said to me um Oh, let's have a listen to this podcast. She's just on Will Sparks. And of course I'm buzzing, mate. I'm fucking buzzing. Because it was the day when I'd, I thought, you know what? I'm on the right path. It was episode 37, pivotal day in my life, mate. And I remember some of the comments that she said to me that day about the podcast. She's like, you know, you talk too much at the start. She's, she's just putting it down, mate. And I thought to myself, fuck man, like, how do you, like, that? That I see lads like you in, in the world that have support. I'm like, you don't need that. You need to, like, that's, yeah. that, you can't. There's not, no one closer to you in your camp the, 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 than your this, partner. Than this woman that you're, sh- that, that, that's, that's, you know, coming around, you're, you're, you're allowing her into your apartment. You, you, you know, you're having sex with this woman. Like, it's, you're connected at certain, on a spiritual yeah. and emotional level. Whether she thinks that's casual or whatever she thinks is another story. But, like, at the end of the day, like, for me, it's a big thing to let someone into my life yeah. at that level because of, of a creative space. And then, Obviously that happened and I just realised from your journey that it's pivotal, so pivotal for a man who's on purpose, who's who's driven in the way that you're driven to have the right woman on the bus with him. Otherwise you're fucked. The thing is I got I got super lucky. Me and Sarah, we met when we were fifteen and sixteen. She was fifteen, I was sixteen. I weren't thinking at that age, right, what do I want in a woman? She needs to be supportive. 
she needs to have you know a vision for her life like I you know I wasn't thinking about these things we both got super lucky with finding each other so like now if I was um, a single guy and I'm like you know I might be thinking about these values but we like we we got super lucky finding each other Mate, you, you think about what a guy has to has to go through these days. I mean, it's I would, I would, ha- the thought like some of my single friends, I'm like the thought of dating in this like day and age. I'm like, it's just it's a different world. Every, so. Everyone's got a fucking link in the bio, mate, and yeah. it's not to a podcast. No. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like it's like you, straight away you're like, oh, really? Yeah. Like you're such a beautiful woman. Like really? Is it like? Is it, the is thing it, is, is like, you need to, obviously you need to be attracted to your partner, but you know, that is just the icing on the cake, you know, like who they are as a person, what their values are, how they treat you, how they, you know, it might like, I just think people in toxic relationships, it's like, it's crazy. It's like, that is in your home. Like fine, if you've got to go to a work environment that's toxic or you've got to deal with your own thoughts of doubt and this and that, but if you've got someone next to you laying in bed, who's who's being toxic to you like i'm like just get out of that situation but but but, but what would you say to god is how pretty they are but what <laughs> yes that's the difficult thing in it when it comes to like men and women like we sometimes get skewed by the looks yeah. do you know what i'm saying we, we, we we're all guilty we've all been guilty of that in the past but like what's your obviously you it's easy for us to say get out but what's your what's your advice for someone to identify whether that person is the right person to be on the bus how would you how would you go about doing that because obviously it's something you inherently know so well because you've got sarah on the bus and she's the right woman for you but how would yeah. you advise a man like me who doesn't have a woman to make sure that he aligns well with the right woman to get on the bus to do this thing i mean i i find it difficult to and the right woman how would you yeah, advise the right woman i find it well? difficult because me and sarah have been together like longer than we've not been together and we both got super lucky. I don't feel like I'm necessarily the right person to answer these questions because I haven't done the trial and error and figuring it out and, you know, breaking up with people and stuff like that. But I think you know, like you just know if something's good for you or if it's bad for you. Like you know if you're drinking too much coffee or whatever, you know it's bad for you or you know if you're doing something in your life. Like if you're in a relationship and, and it's not feeling good, you're not feeling positive, you're not feeling uplifted when you like, okay, so this is how I know. If I have an idea and then I I have people that I know who are uh, negative people, you know, and if I have an idea, I know if I speak to Frankie about that idea, he's going to hype me up. He's going to be buzzing. He'll tell me, he'll tell me straight, you know, you want people that tell you, I want want yes men, but you want me to win. And I know if I tell, like, I'll just make up a name, like uh, Susan, yeah. If I, I already know, I already, you already know what her answer is going to be. That's a terrible idea. You shouldn't do that. Da, da, da. If, yeah. if, so if you picture yourself giving your, your partner an idea or like, I want to do this, da, 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 da. If you already hearing the answers in your head and you know, it's going to be negative. It's like that, that's, that's you know, telling you. And if you find yourself not giving those ideas, like I go home every day to Sarah and I'm like, I've had this new idea, like business idea or something that we could do. Da, da, da. Like I'm, I can't wait to share it with her because you know, I know what her answer is going to be. She's going to be hyped for it. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, I don't know. If you feel like you can't share your your dreams, goals, ambitions. So, so, so the learning then for anyone listening to this is radical honesty, isn't it? It's just about going into your life and assessing every person that you've got in it right now, whether it's friends, family, whatever. And this is for both men and women. I mean, I've approached it from a male perspective because I'm a man, but like, you know, it's women too. It's like, look at who you're surrounded by and and, and ask yourself, you know, am I afraid to tell these people certain things because I'm afraid of them talking down my ideas? And that tells yeah. you about whether you should spend more time or less time with them yeah. straight away. Yeah. I think that's kind of how you got to approach. I know, I already know, like I could literally name out p- people I know and I know what their response would be. So you just, I pick and choose who I'm going to share certain things with. But if that one of those people is your partner in your house yeah. living next to you and they're one of those people that you're not going to be able to share it with, then come on. You yeah, got to leave. <laughs> no, and, and, and it's good that we've talked into that and we've touched on it because I think one of the key things about this podcast that I love about it is the fact of like, I just feel like it gives people permission to break the patterns in their life that do not serve them. 
yeah. in every area of their life, whether it's yeah. money, whether it's freedom, whether it's their thought processes, whether it's their relationships. It's like, this is another one of those moments, guys, that if you're listening to this and you've got to this point and it's, and that, and something in this is resonating or triggering you in some way or making you feel a certain way about something that tells you everything you need to know. I don't need to tell you like you just yeah. ex go People right. listen to yeah. this. We already know like in their head if what their, if their partner is a certain the right person or not i just think you just know i just think it takes courage and it's painful you know to either cut people out of your life or break up with people or fire a toxic employee or whatever it is you know it's always painful breakups in any form are painful but once you've done it it's like you know it's the right thing to do so yeah yeah no i'm i'm, I'm and i hope you guys get something from that but you you've obviously then launched on the back of this successful YouTube channel, you obviously debut is is a clothing line that you've launched, and you've got it into into Foot Asylum, I think now, and you you doing you doing sellout drops and everything else. What made you plug in a clothing line on the back end of everything that you've been doing with the videos and that? Yeah, like multiple different reasons. Um, you know, YouTube has a shelf life. You know, it's great. It's great you make great money off of it but you're not really building you're not building any equity you can't sell it no one can <coughs> invest in it you can't uh, scale it up in a sense you know you're always on camera it's in a sense like you're not swapping time for money because you are mo- earning money when you sleep but in a way you're still in a kind of job that's how i started to look at it i'm still in a really well-paid job because it requires me to turn up be on camera etc um so i was like okay well we have this opportunity we have the YouTube channel, like it's going really well. And now we want to create a business off the back of that, something that we have equity in, something that if one day, years down the line, we wanted to sell. If we shut, if we ever shut down the YouTube channel, which we have no plans to, so don't, if any of my audience watching this, don't worry, we're not shutting it down. But if we have, in the future, like one day, you know, the girl, my girls will be older. They won't be wanting to do it. They'll move out. It's like, what will we have left? So we were like, okay, a business, something that we can scale up, we can have equity in, etc. And then we're like, what are we interested in? The girls are really fashionable. My two older daughters, like, super fashionable. Everyone's always asking, like, where's that from? Where's that hoodie from? Yeah. Da, da, da. Brands are paying them large amounts of money to promote their brand. So I'm like, okay, if they're willing to pay this and they keep coming back, like, it's obviously we working sh- we well. We need our own brand. Like, we need our own brand. Plus, I just, I love business. Like, it isn't just about money and security. Like, I just, I love, I love everything. I li- everything I listen to, podcasts, books, everything. It's all business. I'd love the game of business. So I was like, cool, we can do this together as a family. And it's going to be fun. And it has it's been an absolute roller coaster, And it's been, it's been fun. It's been super successful. And, uh, yeah. And the goal with it was, it's not merch. It's, a, it's its own brand and we want people to wear Devu and have no idea who any of us are and we're already seeing that. We're seeing people buying it or people, you know, influencers reaching out, asking for gifting, like, you know, can I get some free stuff? And I look, they're not following any of us in the family. So they have no idea who we are, but they're like, they want the, they want the clothes. You know, Foot Asylum, stocking it. You know, we know we've hit, we've hit all of the milestones that we wanted to hit in terms of like making it a brand. It's not, it's not YouTube merch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not, not from the numbers in the terms of sales that you're doing, you can tell it's not YouTube merch in terms of like what you're generating and stuff on the back end. But you know, when you, when you can do six figures on a drop in a day, like high six figures in a drop in a day, you know yeah. that you're pushing, pushing great things. I just think it's fantastic that you've built this on doing this like family YouTube channel. Yeah. But does it does it ever get do you ever worry about the obviously you, you must worry about this the children's mental health and all that kind of stuff that goes with it because obviously you know with, with them all being girls as well and you being a protective dad and obviously protecting your wife as well it's like was it was that a bit of a worry in your mind when you started on this journey the way that youtube uh, benefits or affects any of us is always an ongoing conversation in our house like we're very very careful about everything we do my kids are the most important thing in my life. And um, it it wasn't necessarily a worry when we first started because we didn't really know what we were getting ourselves into because, you know, you think, well, you know, further down the road it might take off and it took off quite quickly. But we've been quite fortunate that 
it hasn't really had any negative effects on any of us even like you know none no one's got uh an inflated ego off of it no one's a diva my kids aren't spoiled but also um there hasn't really been any if, if anyone's suffered like mentally from it it's been me like i've got to the point where i'm burnt out you know you're burnt out now well like well i feel a little bit burnt out now but i got to one point it was like i could i literally couldn't i couldn't film i picked up a camera to film the video and i, I just put it down and i was like i can't I can't film any videos right now. I had to have like uh, like two or three weeks off. And I carry the burden of the YouTube channel and Devu. Like my kids, there's no burden on them. They turn up, we have fun. I turn on the camera, we have fun, right? Yeah. So I carry any, they don't care about if that video posts and it gets one view or two million views. They're not checking the numbers. They couldn't care less. So... The mental, um, the mental health issues come in from looking at numbers. Oh, low views, people don't like me. High views, people like me, or not me. Like I don't actually care if people like me, but as in but, they don't like the content, yeah, yeah, yeah. or like you know, constantly, you know, worrying if like your channels can all of a sudden just like start it's going to decline and stuff like this. Like my my kids and Sarah don't have these worries because they trust me and they trust that I've got it. So. I'm the, I think I'm the only one really in the family who sort of like had any like mental health effects of being on YouTube. Yeah, um, no, no. So. And, that, and do you think that came from your ADHD? Um, I've, I've, ADHD has been like, I wouldn't say, first of all, I'll quickly address the, the major burnout I had on YouTube because I think this is really important and it, people will get something from this. I I'm always into personal development, learning more. I always think like learn from the best and you'll improve, right? I actually paid. I was already doing so well, right? I didn't need to actually do this, but I went and paid for this YouTube course from this guy that teaches stuff because I thought oh, you, know, you might learn one trick and double your views or something, right? So I learned, I did this course and it it was good. It was really good information. Like I'm not slating the course, but one of the activities that he has you do on the course is basically you you um, identify everyone in your niche who's at the top of your niche and you study certain elements of their content. And so from an analytical point of view, it makes 100% sense. All of a sudden, I spent two weeks watching the best family YouTubers and comparing myself to that dad, that dad. He's younger, he's better looking, he's more charismatic, he's funnier than me. Like... I literally spent two weeks just watching people who are at the top of their game and it crushed me. I lost all confidence. I literally picked up this camera and I looked at myself. I was like... You thought you were not good enough. Ugly, not good enough. No one cares. Who wants to watch you? Literally put the camera down. When oh, I, I can't, I can't film. I had to have like a couple of weeks off. Recognised, how did I get to this point? Oh, from watching all these other people. Do you know what? I don't have to be the best, the funniest, the this. I just have to be me. Millions of people are watching our content. They're enjoying it. They don't care that you're not that person. Like, you're you. And literally just, like, had to mentally just completely clear my mind of, like, cool, good for you. You get 10 million views on a video. Amazing. Like, I'm happy. I'm hitting more views than I ever thought I'd get on YouTube. Like, you know, like, I just... So... Com- and I think this is what's important because I remember as well, like a few years before this, before we even started on social media, I remember me and my wife both kind of got to this point where she was following, <coughs> she was following uh, all these girls who were like in great shape, you know, as inspiration, motivation. Um, they might even give workout tips, right? So on paper, again, it makes sense, right? It's almost like a vision board. Look at what you want every day. Well, what all it did is it made her feel completely crap about how she looked and that she wasn't going to the gym, you know, five times a week because she couldn't. She's a busy mum. And I was doing the same. I was like following all these guys with six pack, give you tips. Da, 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 da. I felt completely crap about myself. And I was following all these travel things because all I wanted to do was like travel and see the world. And I'd follow these people going to most amazing places and nothing really changed in my life. It didn't make me get in shape and go traveling more. It just made me look at my life and my body like 
Yeah. I hated it. Yeah. And I, we sat there and we both, re- somehow we had this conversation. We recognised what was going on. We unfollowed all these accounts and almost like overnight just started feeling instantly better. So I think it is important to um, inspire yourself and it is important to listen to podcasts and listen to people who've got success stories. But if it gets to a point where it's like a negative thing in your life, um, you know, you've got to stop. <laughs> it's, it's, funny, it's funny you mention that, you see, because um, the other day I was looking at some people that I follow from Australia and I felt in that moment, I was like, oh, I used to live there. I used to live this life and now I'm, and now I'm here and I'm on my own. And, you know, it's, 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 it's hard because I'm finding my feet again after eight and a half years left the country. You know, there's just things that go on in your head, especially when you've got overactive imaginations like me and you have with this ADHD and all this hyper, you know, we're either high as high can be or low as low can be. And people don't perhaps see it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? People don't people yeah. don't see that. You can't I cannot be, I cannot live very well in the middle ground. Yeah. It's all no or, it's ground. all or nothing. Yeah. And it, I, I found myself the other day literally like looking at them thinking, Wow, like I, I used to live that life and it kind of now I feel now I'm looking at life as if I couldn't live it, but I've already lived it and I can live it any time I want to live it. But in your head you're thinking, Well, you're not there now, are you? You you you're in the cold in England, mate. What are you doing? Yeah. You know, you you sat you sat on a, and the thing is, you yeah. can get to any point of your life and still feel like that. Yeah, you know, like I never would have thought that if 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 you'd asked me like three years before when I started my YouTube channel and you said, Joel, if you were getting a million views on a video, if you were earning X amount every month, if you were living life on your terms, would you feel like this? And I'd be like, absolutely not. I'd be smashing. I'd be loving life. There's no way. I wouldn't care what anyone else is doing. But you can get to any point in your life. You can you can say, I want a property portfolio. You could have three properties. You say, yeah, but I want 20. You could get 20. You could say, but I, ha- but I haven't got 30, you know? Yeah. And trying to find, trying to find, especially for people like me and you, trying to find contentment. Contentment? Is that even a word? I trying to be I, content yeah. can be the hardest thing. I don't, really? I don't think content is what I think. I, tr- I think trying to be trying to be grateful for what you've had to give up to get to where you actually are right now is is the key. Yeah. Rather than be content, because me and you are never going to be content. Because content is, oh, we've got to this level and we sit here, but that's not what that's not yeah. what's in our DNA, is it? Yeah. I mean, I, I. It's interesting what you said about you know when you get to a million views on a video. I've never seen anything over. 80,000 views on a video right so I I couldn't even imagine I have seen millions of views on TikTok but I've not seen it on YouTube so I could I couldn't I imagine if I might if, if one of my podcasts hit a million views I would be elated but I don't but I also imagine that you would have just set a new bar there. I would set a new bench level yeah. and now it'd be like okay boom do you know what I mean now everything under a million feels rubbish that's the issue is that is that is that, is that the truth so it's like and this is, you know, I think this is why YouTubers do get, when I first started YouTube, I was like, I'm never going to get burnt out. How am I going to get burnt out? I'm literally living my best life. I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. What am I going to get burnt out from? Because people always talk about creative burnout. But I think the burnout doesn't necessarily come from like the physical work. It comes from the mental game of like the views. So yeah, like um, in, you know, in lockdown, everyone's views went up because everyone's at home. Like we, we was like, our views were smashing it. And then, but that, so rather than go, wow, during this period, let's really enjoy like the fact that, you know, so many more people are loving our content. Well, after lockdown, the views dipped a bit and it went, well, now, like, you know, you said. Why sent, do people hate us? Yeah. Why, why are people not watching the content? It's like, well, well 600,000 people are. Sorry that 750,000 aren't. I mean, or 150,000 aren't. Like, as in, because they got the work. Yeah. Like, but my, my new. Like you weren't getting 600,000 views guaranteed on every video before lockdown, but now you are. But just because you had a little spike, you just constantly move the goalposts. And this is one of the things that people, one of the cliches I hear a lot now, and now I'm starting to understand it, is you have to learn to enjoy the journey because there is no real destination. You never really get there because before you get there, you just move the goalposts. So you have to try, this is what I'm trying to do, like, like enjoy the journey, enjoy wherever I'm at with the clothing line, enjoy where I'm at with YouTube because my wife always says to me, 
So this is the thing you need a you need a woman that hypes you up, but you also need one that tells you whether yeah yeah hundred yeah, percent yeah you need you need you need her to clip your heels <laughs> when you need your yeah. heels clipped. You know what I mean? I think this is what she's found really hard because she's she is a very content person, like and and I envy that about her in a way that she is. But she says to me like, what um you know we have conversations, not just her saying it to me, but I say it to myself is <coughs> when is enough enough? Yeah yeah. And I I ask myself this, and I'm like. Sometimes we're so overworked and so stressed out. People don't see it. People think you're a YouTuber, you pick up a camera, you film a video. It's more to it than that. You know, like there's nights when I've been in here till four in the morning, you know, and I don't post it on my social media and stuff. So, oh, but people just don't get it. And then I, there's periods of time and I go home and I'll say to Sarah, like, like, I don't know, like life's not enjoyable right now. It's so, it's so successful. It's not enjoyable. And then she she sort of says to me, like, when is enough enough? And I'm like, I don't think it ever will be. So I need to figure out how to, I need to figure out how to enjoy it and know that no, enough will never end up be enough, but be grateful for what I have and enjoy the day to day. Like that's, that's probably one of my biggest struggles. I always have new ideas. And like I said to Sarah, like, I've got this new business idea. And she's like, how? How? Like you just don't have the bandwidth for yeah. it. Like how can we do it? I want you to do it, but you know how. <laughs> like, so what? So what's your advice to the guys listening then on how they can be more mindful and and in love with their own journey right now? Because some of them yeah. potentially are there right now, and they're sitting there thinking, you know, they might be working a job in a factory because they want to be they want to save up enough money to buy a camera so they can be a YouTuber or something like that, or they might be doing something else which is part of their journey which I've had to do and you've had to do but how can they become more present and more grateful in that moment for what they're actually going through because it's all has to be done to get to where they're going yeah I mean I think I, there's, a, there's a lot of things that you'll hear across different podcasts like this or books or self-development but you almost start to ignore them because you think yeah no I've already heard that one give me give me the real answer but like Things like gratitude, you know, at one point, like I go through having like really good routines and then falling out of routines. But times when I felt best is like when I've had a routine and it's involved some kind of gratitude. I don't have to sit there in a the mirror for 20 minutes, but I literally write down three things I'm grateful for. And I always make sure that those things I'm grateful for are really minuscule things, like petty things that you take for granted. Like me and my kids used to do it on the way to school every day. I used to drive them to school. We used to do it right three things you're grateful for it'd be like and especially pick things that you don't like right so i'll explain what i mean so it's like things that you aren't grateful for but you are grateful for so uh you're going to school i don't want to go to school today okay I tell me to. why you're grateful for school well grateful for school because there's some kids that don't get the opportunity to go to school not only do they not go to school they have to go and work in a factory or they have to go and walk 10 miles to get water that isn't even clean right now I'm grateful for school. I didn't want to get up this morning, you know. Well, <laughs> some people can't get up out of bed in the morning because they can't walk. Or you like find the things in your life that you're really like. I, I'm, I don't know, factory worker. Like I don't want to be working in this factory. Okay, but I have an income that I can use to buy this camera, so I'm going to enjoy the fact that I'm not unemployed. So gratitude is is massive, and also recognizing. When you've hit certain goals, like um, we were talking about before the podcast started, we were you know, there's things that I beat myself up about, like oh I haven't done that. But reminding yourself, like wait a minute, I I said that we were going to start a YouTube channel and we were going to make X amount of money from it. I wrote that in my journal. What what was the amount of money you were hoping to make? So when I wrote, because I used to, I used to do um, I used to sort of like do affirmations and that in my journal. I used to be like I am, you know, we are. How long did you do that for, by the way? So again, like with my ADHD, I go through periods of like good routine, bad routine. So uh, there's period I've gone through periods of time of doing it. So I might have done it for like three months before I fell off. But it doesn't matter. It's not about perfectionism. It's about it's not about doing it perfect all the time. Just do it, even if you're doing it for two weeks and you don't do it again for six months. At least you did it for two weeks. And I wrote stuff in my journal. And I said, uh, I was like, uh, we're making we're full time YouTubers. We're making I don't know, I wrote down like, I think it was uh, £20,000 a month 
from being full-time YouTubers. Like, these are ambitious goals. It's like, then you look back at it and it's like, cool, well, we smashed that. And how many times, and how many times, how many times, is it, are you, are you earning three times that, four times that, how much you earning times that now? I don't really, I, I don't really share, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but isn't, but isn't, but isn't that a beautiful thing that, that you've had a, this is why it's so important and, uh, and I want all of you to do this today. It's like, if you haven't listened to my other podcast on here about the, the vision and goals, go and listen to that as well. But g- listen, listen to what Joel's telling you. He's telling you that he's, he's successful in YouTube and he's done this and he's done that. And he's done everything else. But it's like, he had a vision board. He had a journal. He wrote things down. He did yeah. affirmations. It, like there's, yeah. there, there must be some relevance in that then. It can't just be bullshit if, if no, you're doing it. And, you're, you're, and the thing is like, this is the longest period of time I've gone without doing any of that stuff that kind of, I feel helped get me to where I am. But it, it's, so it, it doesn't mean, I, I made a vision board, but I only looked at it every day for probably like a week and then I forgot about it but I still was ingrained that visions in my mind. And I still know now when I look at that original vision board that I hit everything on there. Right? Yeah. So you don't, it doesn't matter. Even if you just make it and you, and you fall off looking at it every day, the fact you made it, you made a vision of your life. You got some clarity on the things that you want or, you know, your, your things change. Like I put a Range Rover on that original vision board. I don't want a Range Rover. I don't really care, but you know, it's like, so it doesn't matter, but you're trying to, create a life you want getting some clarity writing it down like i was i was like at one point i was aggressive with my affirmations like i would be driving home from the gym if you pulled up next to me at the traffic lights you like this guy's mental because i was literally like talking things out talking things out loud but i think that's so good i think because because if you if you think about tv what is tv called it's called it's called what what things that go on TV called TV programs. They are programs that someone else has made to program your mind in a certain way of thinking that, that suits them and suits their advertising and everything else. Right? That's a TV program. That's why I don't watch TV programs because that's what it is. Yeah. What are you saying, Joel? You're saying I am choosing the program that I repeat to myself every day that I program my own mind with. So what am I saying then? Well, I'm saying, Joel that everyone who listens to this podcast, you get to choose which program you put in your mind every day of your waking life. And I'm telling you, the program that you need to choose is the one of your choosing, your actual free choice, not one that's pre-manufactured for you to put in your mind. Because so many of you are just idly going through thinking, thinking that the subliminal messages in Netflix documentaries and everything else don't influence your life. They do. They yeah. do absolutely. They do. Yeah, everything, everything, everything around you in your environment does. So if you can pick five minutes a day to choose what you're going to influence your brain with, and choose what you're going to influence your subconscious with, like why not? Because the rest of the day is going to be influenced by things that you don't even realize and environments that you've got to be in. You have to be around people at work. You have to be around, you know, family and da 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 da. So you you choose what you're going to put into your subconscious, even if it's just five minutes a day. And yeah, I think, I mean, one of the things that was happening at that time in my life, like my, at the time she was my youngest daughter. Now she's my middle, middle, well, third, she's my <coughs> third old, third oldest. Third young, Get old. this right. Otherwise she's going to kill you. She's in the <laughs> middle. Anyway, she's so I've middle. got, I've got five daughters. So I've got Casey, 17, Grace, who's 15, Sophie, who's about to turn 11, Chloe, who's about to turn five and we've got madison who's one so sophie has special needs and she had some serious health issues when she was a baby and we just didn't know if she was going to live or not and we you know that was a really really tough time and so that's also partly what started my affirmations my affirmations were and that's why they were quite aggressive they were very they were she will live you know she will live wow, a man. full life she will you know because doctors sort of gave us a bit of a diagnosis of like you know she won't she won't live to see her teen years yeah. she's she's turning 11 but there's she her health issues are she has no she has special needs she's very delayed you know um she's going to need support but she doesn't have any life threatening health issues like she did when she was a baby she was tube fed she was massively underweight you know 
literally she she would be in hospital all the time. She was in intensive care. Um, you know, so my affirmations were <laughs> She she will be healthy. She she is living a full life. She is making it. She's living a full life to old age. You know, she's not dying of anything else other than old age. You know, like these were the things that I was affirming, and I was also adding on to the back of that how our life would look as a family, and that was also one of my motivations to want to do like YouTube and stuff. Is because like uh, there's other career things that I had ideas for that would have been. I think successful, but they would have just taken me further away from my family. The more successful it would have been, the more I would have been away from my family. So YouTube was like a way of being like, we can have the freedom. I can spend more time with my family and also we can have opportunities. And also like we need some financial security. We have a child that has serious health issues. Like, you know, I don't want to be tied up in a job and when I could be supporting my daughter yeah, yeah, and my yeah. wife and spending you know, time with them and spending time with them. Cause yeah. So that's kind of how I got into the affirmations. I think it's a, power, it's a powerful thing to, to have such a driving force. And I, I know myself from, I had to watch my sister lose a child and it, you know, broke my fucking heart. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And, um, and I, I, even between me and my sister, my mum lost a child. And when a woman loses a child in that way, obviously as a man, you can't imagine how it feels, but when you're close to those people, having to see a woman go through that, it's fucking heartbreaking enough. But you also feel it as a man mm. of what they're going. And what people don't understand on the back of losing, like potentially losing a child or losing a child is the fact of like if you lose a child, it's like that can affect how that woman is with the next child and how they treat the next child and they might be a bit more distant with them and then that causes a whole load of problems for that person in the in the life. And those traumas and those things is are things that you as an adult have to get over. Do you know what I'm saying? So there's there's, there's so much yeah. psychologically just the f- just the fear of you potentially losing this child that you love unconditionally can make you more distant with the children that follow because you don't want essentially without you even realizing it you perhaps don't want to get as close because you think oh, could i lose this child like is there's all these things that people don't see right yeah but yeah there's so many different ways that people can cope with situations i think again like i'm just so lucky to have sarah you know sarah was you know sarah in those situations with what was going on with sophie what we had each other we were each other's rocks we kept each other strong positive like this was so important do you know what I mean? Like neither one of us were like, oh, you know, like crying about it and saying this is what's going to happen. Da, da, da. We were both adamant. We we said to our family, we said, once we had this, like, because we just we just didn't know what was wrong with her. She still doesn't have like a diagnosis, but we didn't know. And then when the doctor said this, and we shared it with family, and a couple of days later, I was like, I feel like people are looking at her different. People are looking at her with sad eyes because you've put a label on her. Yeah, people now, rather than looking at Sophie and imagining her like you would any of your other, any of my other daughters of like, yeah, they're, they're happy, they're healthy, they're living a full life, da, da, da. Now they're looking at it with like sad eyes. And I'm like, I'm not having that because you're already accepting, you're already accepting her, that fate for her. You're, so I, we said to everyone, we said, no, like you, you see Sophie how you see our other kids, you see her growing up growing old like you need to have that vision for her you can't look at her with these sad eyes like you're like we can't do that that's not what we're doing because you speak people found it hard but we were just like we were adamant we were just like no we don't we reject that diagnosis we went back to the doctors and um they did further tests because they gave her a diagnosis and they said we can't find that diagnosis that we gave her I said, good. The, the, to see <laughs> the problem, the problem I have, Joel, with a lot of people that go and get tested for ADHD is the fact of like it's very easy. We 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 we've all got low attention spans these days. It's very easy to to get classed as ADHD and then um and then take on that label and wear it like a badge of honor and become the label yeah. that you are. Yeah, I've watched one of my mates from boxing who's boxed at world title level 
recently just get married. I've watched him just put on Facebook the other day when I went on there to throw a piece of content up. I don't go on Facebook, but he'd he'd written on written on his Facebook status that he that he that he, that he um he'd got this diagnosis of ADHD and it's made everything made sense and yeah. you could fully see that he's and I was disappointed because I could fully see and I'm going to call him about this. But I, you could fully see he's just completely bought into this label of ADHD and he's now decided to live his life as if ADHD is affecting him. We're about to get onto a really... Right. I'm telling you right fucking now, right? Never, ever, ever take on a label that someone else has given you. Because if I wake up this morning and the doctor says I've not got ADHD and then I go to the doctor in in the afternoon and he says I've got ADHD... What the fuck? What the fuck? What this the- is probably what this is a really this is a dilemma for me, right? I agree and disagree with you at the same time, I, and I'm right? happy to I'm happy to have that. So, kind of- um, okay, so I so so my my journey has been I got to the point was I was so frustrated with myself with my life, right? I didn't know I had ADHD at this point. I was <coughs> I was ready to just give up on everything, my hopes, my dreams everything like it was i i i got really depressed you know like i could not figure out why i read every productivity book every but couldn't be productive book. i couldn't be productive all they did was make me feel worse because they gave me the answers and it's like couldn't action it yeah it's like you're saying oh i don't know what this feeling is in my throat and i'm like it's thirst you're just thirsty you're like, oh my god amazing like here I'll have a drink you can't reach the water like but you know what the you know what the issue is. I was like, every time I read one of these books, it's like perfect, changed my life. Like I'm now going to be productive, and I just couldn't. I could not action and execute on my ideas and my goals. And then the longer this went on, it was so painful. And I went to counselling, and I said to, I just I was like, look, I just feel like I'm. I don't know. I I know what I want for my life, and I I can't do it. And I just went to this counsellor and we were talking over a few sessions and she kept asking me stuff about my child and I was like I'm not I don't have daddy issues like I'm not here for, for like that I just need to talk through some of the things I'm going through and she, she kept asking me questions I said I don't know I don't remember I don't remember I don't remember I don't, remember. I don't I have a really bad memory I have, I have the honestly I have such a horrendous memory and then she said like have you ever been tested for um any like ADHD or anything like this I'm like no of course not like for me, ADHD was the kid in the class who couldn't sit still and was bouncing off the walls. Like that was the ADHD kid. Like I was like, that wasn't me. So but then I started looking into it and it was, I understand the the guy that would have put out on Facebook. Like for me, it was like, okay, you're not lazy. You're not broken. You're not this, you're not that. You have this thing. Now I have the answer of like why I feel like this, why I can't do this. And now can can make this ADHD work for me rather than trying to fight against it. So it's like this is and, and me and my wife even now like we have arguments, debates and stuff like it's really hard for her living with someone with ADHD. So she sometimes says to me, I feel like now you've got this label, you use it as a crutch. And I'm like, honestly, I was like, if I could shake this thing, I'd shake this thing. Like, so in a way, like for me, when I found out I had ADHD, I could now address the problem. Like I knew now these productivity hacks were never going to work for me. They made sense on paper. They're logical, right? But you're not logical. But my brain doesn't work like that. So I could start to adapt these productivity systems so that they worked for me. And when I'd fall off them and then come back on them, I realized that I'm never going to be 100% like consistent on them. Like it's just not how my brain's wired. But as long as I come back to them. So this, I ended up, so from that counseling, like that's when my, I and I addressed the ADHD and I started to work differently. That's how I then managed to be able to get to where I am in life because I managed to figure it out. But had I not been given that label for me, I wouldn't. I would have still been beating myself up and saying everyone else can do this, getting things done by well, why? You know, why G- can't I? Yeah, why yeah. can't I? Like everyone else reads this book and then they're doing this. Like this person has the sickest morning routine. This person's smashing at the gym. Da 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 da. Then I was like starting to address like. And things got better for me. Like I managed to actually do it because I could recognize. And I I speak to people and I, and I have these conversations. Sometimes I think like that, like I used to meet with a business coach once a week and 
he'd say to me like sometimes I feel like you just take on the ADHD label and then you're just like well I can't do it like that because I've got ADHD and I'm like sometimes I think I might be doing that and sometimes I'm just trying to tell you that I'm just not wired the same way yeah, yeah. That your other clients are and it's the same with my wife like literally yesterday no two days ago we actually got into a bit of a heated argument we hardly ever argued but it was to do what was with, the argument about it was to do with adhd and like and i get it like i get her frustrations it's hard living with someone with adhd like is she is she more concerned that you've bought into the label so she said this is what she said the other day is she said i feel like it's getting worse and she said but i think it's getting worse because you're almost accepting defeat and you're not trying and i there might be some truth in that but um I'm like, I don't, I was like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't use it as a crutch. I'm not like, I, I work hard, like to, to make this thing work for me. Like it's, it's honestly like the biggest bane of my life. So it's hard to hear people saying but sometimes it, but, but that it, I'm using it as a crutch because I don't feel like I am, but maybe sometimes I am. I don't know. See, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's the biggest bane of your life. Because I see it completely differently to you. Because I could, if, if I accept for myself the label of ADHD, as soon as you accept any label, I kind of, I kind of find when you accept any form of label, it's disempowering, right? Yeah. It, it disempowers you in some form because you've accepted that there's these letters after your name and you've accepted at that point that those letters after your name mean something and they truly don't because you get up every day and you're the same guy today as you were the day before you got this label just objectively speaking yeah. right nothing's nothing's changed and everything you've achieved in your life joel and everything you're doing and the, and the reason why you've been driven to set up this successful clothing brand and the reason why you're in these stores and the reason why you can do six figures in a day and all this stuff, all that reason is predicated on this, on the, the drive that you have within yourself. Right. I call it drive. Yeah. 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 Obviously sometimes every human, you might not be able to concentrate on that over there. You might concentrate better over there, but it's worked for you, not against you. Yeah. I think when you accept labels, you could potentially take in what could be I perceive as your biggest asset and potentially making it into a point where you, you can use it as some form of excuse or some form of this or some form of that to kind of, and then, and then, and then, and then of course it causes drama, potential drama between you and your wife potentially, because she's like, well, hang on a minute. You had this for, I've known you for 20 odd years. Uh, we've been in a relationship for this long and, Everything we've achieved is predicated because you're like this, but yeah. but now we've put a label on it. I, I I get what you're saying, and I think and I think this is why it's difficult, right? Because so I I I, I say like my ADHD is like a blessing and a curse. Like we, without or if if you don't want to call it ADHD, my brain is a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because without the way it's wired, I wouldn't have had the ideas to think outside the box and do what we've done. But because of the way it is, yeah. it makes it really, really difficult. And I heard someone once say, like, AD, having ADHD is like having a Ferrari as a brain with no brakes, right? Because you've got... I feel you on that. I feel you yeah, on that. <laughs> you've got this brain that can produce, like, the, the engine underneath the Ferrari, which is the capabilities are unbelievable. But if you can't control that engine... You've got fear brakes, brakes. Yeah. Right? It's worthless... Well, I'm not saying that anyone with ADHD is worthless, but like it makes it really, really tricky, right? So you have to. So what I've managed to do is figure out. So if I, okay, this is where this is where I have the problem with the label versus non-label thing, right? If I don't accept that I have ADHD, right? Uh, let's say that you have one leg, right? Right. It, you have to accept that you have one leg. You're not going to give up on life. But you don't have to accept that it limits you. Yes. That's the difference. That is the key difference, right? You can't go around saying I have two legs and I'm going to do things how two-legged people do them, right? Because you're going to fall flat on your face. What you do have to say is I do have one leg, but I'm going to make it work, okay? Yeah. And I'm going to have to do things different to how other people are doing them. If you don't accept, this is my personal opinion, Please take whatever you want from this. 
if I don't accept that I have ADHD and I don't accept that my brain is wired different, I will try and try and try and do things the way other people do them and I'll keep falling flat on my face as I did for years. Now I accept I have it, I will not accept defeat, but I will do things differently, right? And I can give examples of that if people if people watching this, that maybe there might be people watching this who are kind of in the situation I was before. But like, for example, right? I can't work at home, yeah? I, I And I've told myself, you can work at home. I've done the affirmations. You can work wherever you want. You have focus, da, 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 right? At some point, I have to recognize. I can't work from home. It's impossible for me. I sit down at my laptop and my, it just can't work, right? You need a I go to a coffee shop, yeah? And I'll be so productive. If I have to, if I, sometimes I come, this place where we are now is about 20 minutes from my house, right? I might only have an hour's work to do. I will drive 15 minutes, 20 minutes here and back, right? And I'll still be more productive than if I spent that whole time at home. I have to recognize these things about myself. I have to recognize that some people will say, um, there's a book called Eat That Frog. I don't know if you yeah, yeah, it. Brian Tracy. Brian Tracy, amazing book. And it really helped me, but it only really helped me once I figured out how to make it work for me. The the uh, I'm sure a lot of people know it. If you had to eat a live frog every day, right rather than put it off to the end of the day eat it first thing in the morning right and you've done the hardest thing you have to do all day so you recognize in your work schedule what is your frog the thing you're most likely to put off like you know whatever that thing is do it first thing you'll feel amazing the productivity the rest of your day will be amazing makes absolute logical sense when i tried doing that i'd sit at the desk with this frog not only would i not do the other stuff i wouldn't eat the frog what i realized for myself is that i have to I have to ease myself in and then I figured out like what I will have a super productive day. I have to do something slightly enjoyable, not for too long. My morning routine has to be somewhat enjoyable. When I woke up, when I was doing cold showers and doing some grueling workout, da, 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 I just ended up staying in bed. When I was like, I'm going to get up, I'm going to have a coffee, I'm going to I'm gonna drive to work, I'm going to have a chat with my pal. Like that was what worked for me. It's not, it's not what every yeah, other yeah, guru yeah, yeah. is telling you, but that worked for me. And all of a sudden, I could do things productive. But if I just try and listen to what makes sense to other people, like what, like do you know what I mean? Like culture, the, the, like, the, you know, the, do the, all these things. Like the the less the lesson in this I'm picking up, and I want every one of you that's listening to this to pick up is the fact of like what Joel's saying is true. It doesn't whatever whatever works for you works for you. But whether whether you take on a label and use it to empower you that way the way that Joel's the way that Joel's telling you to do it or whether you agree with me and you don't take on the label because you think it'll disempower you that is something you yeah. need to be aware of bef- when it comes to labels as well I think the main thing is it's fine how what you said is good and what I said is good and neither is right or wrong but the main thing that we both agree on is whatever you choose to do it has to empower you yes when I yes. take on the label it empowers me yes because it, it lets me know that this you, is how I work. You needed you needed to feel complete, and you didn't when you didn't have a label. Me yeah. and I, I never looked for the label. Someone actually recognised it. So, so someone recognised it, but but yeah. then it all made sense to you when you got that label. Whereas with me, bec- I, I I speak a lot of this. I have a massive self belief in myself. Right in terms of yeah. like it's ever since the day I picked up a microphone, I'm right right. I'm going to be one of the best education podcasters ever lived. I've decided that in my mind and that's what I'm going to fucking do. Yeah. And that is what I'll deliver. And 100%. I could, and I could not give a fuck about anyone else's opinion on that analytics, all the other bullshit. I know that that's where I'm going and I've known it since day one and it's done in my head. I've done it. I've yeah. seen it. I've visioned it. I've sat there. I've thought about it. I've looked at it. It's fucking done. That works for me. I've got that. I know exactly how it looks and I know exactly. I don't know how long it takes me to get there. I don't know the time frame. But I just know that's done, right? Yeah. Just because that works for Frankie Lee doesn't mean that what's worked for Joel isn't the right yeah. thing either. Doesn't mean what's going to work for Cindy over here ain't the right thing either. Like it's, this it's, is so important. Yeah, it's honestly because I listened to one of your podcasts the other day. Um, I'm a fan of the Frankie Lee podcast. Like, if anyone's listening, Bro, I'm that, actually, that, I'm, that, I'm a fan, and I'm on the show that I actually it, listen to. It I actually, love this. It actually means a lot that you said yeah. that. I, I get so much information from from your guests and that and people that i wouldn't have otherwise even known about some of them so i love it but um i listened to one of your podcast guests and i'm really bad with names i'm sorry i can't remember his name but the title of the podcast was something about earning x amount with 
uh, no team. Like no, he had no. Yeah, team. his name his name's Adrian Portelli. He turns yeah. over sixty million dollars a year and has zero employees. Yeah, amazing, incredible, absolutely incredible. I could never do that. It doesn't work for me. I have to have a team, right? So listening to that podcast, being self aware and knowing what I know and knowing that you have to find <coughs> to work for me. But yeah. previously, I might have been like, oh, well, that's how that's how it's done. And if you do anything less than that, you're an idiot. But like. You know, people might listen to that and be like, oh, well, I'm not going to have a team. Well, do you know what? Like, I need a PA. Like, that's how I have actually managed to achieve a lot of things. We I, Like, having people around me that are good at the things I'm bad at is how I manage to move forward. If I try and just do it all myself, um, I wouldn't be where I am. So, and, and that works for me, and that's what works for him. And I'd love to be saying, oh, I don't need anyone, but I do. So you just got to figure out what works for you and not, just take everything because that's gospel. Just because it works for him, that's the way to do it. With Adrian, the thing is that people don't understand. Yeah, he doesn't. He has zero employees. That's true. He doesn't have zero contractors. Yeah, right. So this is this is what's this is this is what he's saying. All he's saying is he doesn't employ people on paye terms. He's not going to have them on the payroll, but he but he pays people well. Like pays a gra- you know pays his video guys, his graphic designers, his all yeah. these, these social media people or whatever. He pays them all well. He probably has a team of probably about five, five ten people really. Yeah, probably probably maybe fifteen, but they're all contractors. Which yeah. and that's what he's saying. He says he doesn't want employees. He doesn't like fat because employees yeah. get fat and lazy and it become complacent. That's yeah. that's that was the whole meaning but, behind that. But and, I understand what you're yeah. saying. And obviously, yeah, he does go on to explain it. But like for me, again, like I like, like we have a small team there on PAYE. Because um, you want that family. I like, I like, that's what works for me. The loyalty, the winning together, the stuff like that. That's what I like. That's the environment I like to work in. I also have um, uh, contractors that do stuff for us. I don't have that same um, relationship with them. So, you know, it's good for some stuff and other stuff. I want them on the team, you know. That's that's so again. It's just it's just whatever works for you. You have to figure it out. Whatever if if you're following someone's morning routine and you're dreading getting up every morning, it's not for you. But if you're loving it, it's for you. Or there's things you need to tweak. You need to change them. You know. Like, I, I, I want to ask you one question. Yeah. Like why Why do you listen to my podcast? Um, the thing about your podcast. So I listen to I listen to a lot of podcasts. Right, all business related. I love it. I do it when I'm driving, when I'm cleaning the kitchen, anything that I'm sort of just doing, I can listen to it. The thing that's different about your podcast is you get into the nitty gritty of stuff, and you, if if one of your guests say um, talks about a certain thing and they're kind of like passing over, you'll be like, no, but I want my audience to get value from that. Can you break that down? Can you explain how you structured that deal? Can you explain what that means? You can walk away from your podcast and have actionable things that you could do in your life. You could you could change this or you can do in your business, right? And there's not a lot of podcasts that I listen to that you can really do that. You might hear yeah. someone's life story. It's inspirational. One of my favorite podcasts is How I Built This. I don't know if you ever listened Guy to Raz. it. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's like, it's like documentary in podcast form. And I really enjoy it. Phenomenal guy. But it's not always like a lot of stuff that I could like walk away with, you know, information. So I think that's what I like about yours. You don't gloss over some of the details. You get stuck in and you get your guests to break it down and explain it. So people watching can can do something with that information. And um, so some of the other stuff I listen to business, it's, it's like inspiration, entertainment. Yours is like real education. See, see, here's here's the thing, right? I listen to a few other business podcasts that come across the table, top ones, and I'm like, you just you just told the hero's journey again, yeah, and it and it and it, it frustrates me because I'm like, if I had Richard Branson in front of me, yeah, we could we could talk about how he's gone from this to this, and then he bought an airline, this, this, and this, and this, but it's like. You know, yeah. ask some ask 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 some questions where the audience can just take that fucking yeah. information today and put it into their life today yeah. and change their business or change their mindset or change that's just that's just what 
that that's what I'm trying to change in this in this whole space. Uh, that's why it's, it's it's it just interested me because obviously I, I have a I have quite a few listeners like yourself that are very very successful people, and I'm like, but why would they be listening to? What I'm doing, even though it's like it's successful, it's doing well. It's but while I'm, it's just interesting. The other thing as well is like uh, I agree about the thing about the hero's journey. Like I, there's a very well known podcast that I, I'm I'm not going to say it. It's, it doesn't matter what it is, but they yeah they had Richard Branson on. I've listened to Richard Branson's story on another podcast. I started listening to it in ten minutes in. I turned it off because I'm like yeah, I already know the story. I'm not really going to get anything uh, more from it. So but yeah, if, and, if, if which is fine like other yeah. people might not have heard his story so they'll be hearing it for the first time i've heard his story i've read one of his books you know cool but if you had him on i'd listen to it because i know i'm going to get something that I wouldn't have got from one of these other podcasts i i just i just this is what excites me about this game is the fact that i'm going to get to go at some people like in terms of like if 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 when storms he does a podcast if Stormzy goes on someone else's podcast, whoever it is, he's going to tell he's going to tell the hero journey about coming off the street, off the street, yeah. becoming a rapper, then do go more gospel and this that, and that's all people are going to hear. Yeah. But if I get Storms in a room, I swear down, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we I'm going to get insights because this yeah. guy is a lyrical genius, and I want to get insights that people. Yeah. That listen to this podcast can put in their ears like like even even like you've not come on here today and, and told your hero's journey. We talked about all manner. We've gone all over the shop, and that's what I love about this. Yeah, game. I've been on a few podcasts, but I've, this is the deepest I've ever gone. I've never, I've never, I've never even shared with our audience on YouTube some of the stuff that I've um, shared today, and that's what that's. This is what I love about your podcast. So it's like you really get down it's, to the, the nuts I, and bolts of it. I just, <laughs> I, just I, I just, I just love to have people on like yourself that you can have the vulnerability with, where you, it's a safe space to share yeah. things like you know sharing about. You know, having a child that's gone through so much, you know what I mean? And how that felt for you and your wife and, yeah. you know, all the important things and, and the relationship stuff and everything else that we've talked about in this is just, it's just, it just, that's just what lights me up. Yeah. Completely, man, completely. But you, you obviously have, have had some massive, massive wins in terms of like the money you're doing and this and the other, but what has been the, the hardest thing for you in the last 12 months that you've had to overcome? Oh, that's a good question. What has been the hardest thing? I think, I think, so a lot of people, like I said, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I hear a lot of success stories and I hear a lot of people just winning at life. And like, you know, on the outside looking in, it's like we're winning, right? But sometimes I don't feel like we're winning because sometimes I feel like it's hard, like it's 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 hard like it's there's a lot of days this year that i've just felt like what's the point in it i just feel constantly busy i feel like i don't have time for i feel like i have less time for family and friends the whole point of starting a business and being an entrepreneur and doing a youtube channel was that it was freedom right so like, sometimes i feel less free than i've ever felt because i feel like uh, like it's gonna sound to some people they're like, Oh yeah, like violin, you know, you you literally like doing stuff that other people want to do. But your reality just changes, you kind of adapt to what's in front of you and sometimes it feels like oh, I'm a slave to or I'm a victim of my own success. And I think it's sometimes it's really hard because it's like I thought my life would be I thought I'd be so much happier sometimes. Generally I'm happy, but sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm like, I don't know, just feel like I'm just working all the time because there's always more to do. There's always more to do. There's always more to do. So one of the things that I'm really trying to work on and me and my wife talk about this all the time is like, we just want to feel less busy. We want to feel more present. We want to feel more in control of things. So, you know, whether that's like not set, taking on every opportunity, whether that's like having the right team around us, whether that's... um I don't know, just like trying, trying, to, trying to have a bit more balance, you know? Because recently I feel like work has just taken over. But one of the reasons I wanted to do this is I have more time for my family. Sometimes with my family, I'm just not present because all I'm thinking about is all the different open loops in my head about, you know, the business, the YouTube channel, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that's, that's been a bit of a struggle for me. Yeah. 
Let me ask you a question, right? If you if you if you if you if if, if you checked out the world tomorrow, you died tomorrow. How would you want your daughters to to speak about and remember you as as in as in being a father? Yeah, um, I'd want them to mostly just be that I was there for them. Really, like that I had time for them, that I was there for them, that I supported them. That those are the main things that really matter to me. Like. And this is the hard thing because no one's really going to say, yeah, but he made this much money or he did this in business. Like at the end of the day, like no one really cares. But at the same time, you know, I don't want to. This is what's difficult, isn't it? It's, it's good. Like, it's good that you've said that, Joel, because I think you, I, the reason I wanted you to say that out loud, the reason why I asked you that question, it's a hard question for me to ask someone. But the reason why I asked you that is because I want you to understand that in this moment already that all the girls think that of you already. They all they, 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 that that you are enough and that you do enough for them and they appreciate everything you do. I can see that in the in the content you put out and everything that you do. You know, you, you've empowered your girls to to have their own personal brands, and I don't think you you potentially fully realise that. And now that they they have income on the back of these personal brands, and they're where and they've and they're setting up a clothing brand, and they're enjoying what they're doing, and they and they feel fulfilled in their stuff. And you've given them that opportunity because, as a dad, you've said, "I want more for mine and Sarah's life and our children's life," and that's what something I need you to realise. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, just from the outside looking in. Yeah, no, I. It's a difficult question for me to ask. Yeah, no, it's a it's a good question. And this is the thing is like you do need to stop and ask yourself these difficult questions because you need to get perspective on life, you know. And this is what makes you feel more grateful about things when you realize that, you know, things are things are good. This is how, you know, this is what you this is where you wanted to be or this is what you want your kids to think about you. And you are achieving that. I think. Yeah, I think I just think I just think like this year, like one of my goals this year is just to stop being having to say to everyone oh, i'm i'm too busy i'm too busy like i want to be productive yeah. i want to work hard i love it have but you ever tried to 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 time block to say so to say look in this block of time no cameras it's just family time and we're doing this and also i think something that may that i know other entrepreneurs and other people do in their life and some of you can do in your lives that listen to this is like you can have a date night with your wife once a week. You can plan day, day dates where you take out one daughter at a time and just spend time with yeah. that one daughter for an hour or two hours. Yeah, we definitely do all that stuff. Like I definitely um, I definitely have, uh, I think what it is, yeah, it's like I, I spend a, a really good amount of time with my family. I don't feel like I don't do that. I just feel like this busy feeling makes me sometimes not as present even when I'm present, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of what I want to tackle. But, yeah, you have to make time for things that are important. Me and Sarah, we go on date nights all the time, spend different different activities with different kids. And, like, YouTube, um, we always said from the beginning, like, YouTube, we want it to be part of our life but not our entire life. And we have kept it, we've kept a really good balance that we don't film we don't film all of our lives. Like we don't daily vlog. We don't really vlog our videos. If you're watching one of our videos, like we curated that moment for YouTube. So it doesn't depend on us having to pull out the camera every time that something uh, interesting or dramatic happens in our lives, because that's a very slippery slope. You suddenly lose all those boundaries because if anything interesting or dramatic that happens in your life is good content, <coughs> all of a sudden the camera comes out at, the, the best moments and the worst moments yeah and we don't pull them out at the best or the worst moments we pull the camera out when we said we were going to pull it out we said we're going to film this video this saturday from this time till this time and this is what's going to happen in it not oh my goodness like one of our kids has been rushed to the hospital grab the camera <laughs> or oh my goodness like one of our kids has just had like something amazing happen grab, grab the, the camera. camera yeah no, no, no. we don't do that we it's very it's you know and i think but, that's i'm even though i don't know how we really got there in the beginning it might have been a subconscious thing might have been conscious but i'm so glad that that is the route we went down and we didn't go down other routes that other family channels have gone down 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think some of them just get so zoned into into being content churners that they just start. Yeah. They just there's parts of their life that they share that should be just for the just that moment should have just been between a child and its dad, yeah. a child and its mother. Very, yeah. very. I'm glad that you're acute. Obviously, I know you're acutely aware of that, but I, but I know the difference of what you're talking about with other channels. Yeah. But just, I want to give the audience um, value on this. Can you reverse engineer to me on here so that people understand how you reverse engineer a successful YouTube video in terms of like how you break that down? So do you come up with a title first and then work your way back from that? Or how does that only work? Think in ter- only s- think and speak in terms of titles right okay so when we're when we're thinking about an idea um the thing is in our niche like family um family vlogging or family channels or other content that is geared towards like a similar age demographic because obviously our demographics a lot younger than me more like the age of my kids so in that world it's a lot of trends so you do you know you do different trends or whatever so like only eating red food for 24 hours or only eating from ikea for 24 hours like stuff that before i started youtube i'll be like who's gonna watch who wants to watch that but like people love it people find it interesting or we do like shopping people love like challenges to do with like shopping um so yeah you always talk in terms of titles so you never say oh we'll do this video where we walk around ikea and we we're gonna just eat the food there for the day and da da da. You just go only eat in IKEA food for twenty four hours. Cool, that's the idea. That's what we're doing. We just talk in terms of titles. And if you if you can't if you can't um, explain your video in a title, then you don't really have a video in my eyes. So and it's got to be a short, punchy title. Yeah, pretty. Yeah, the shorter the better. If you can, the shorter the better. If you can get it across what you want to what you want to do. So like in the beginning, like my wife would say. Oh, oh, I got this idea. Why don't we do uh, this, 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 and this, this, this? And I'm like, what's the title? She's like, what? I'm like, it's, we don't have a video. There's no title. The be- what's the, the title? The, be- the best title I ever wrote was $60 million, zero employees. That was the best yeah. title I ever wrote. Incredible. And it I, just, and I clicked it. And it, and it. and it went, it went yeah. to like 60, 70,000 people and it went there quick. Yeah. And I was like, and I, I was, <laughs> it's mental. So I think there's probably not a lot of people listening that would be, thinking about like doing YouTube in our niche in what we do. But in terms of just generally in YouTube, like if you can open a curiosity loop where the only way to close it is to watch the video. So I, you know, I didn't, you know, I was making no money in my business until this is a horrendous title. It's really long. Don't use this as an example. I wasn't making any money until I did Did this. this. Yeah. Question what? Yeah, what, as long what as that do? thing that you're saying or the uh, the three ways that you're using your iPhone wrong, yeah. you know, like uh, if you're if you can generate curiosity, like I clicked on that. How's this guy doing sixty million for a start? Yeah, yeah. regardless, and how's he doing it with no team? Yeah. You open two curiosity loops for me, and I need to close it, so I listen to the thing, and then the thumbnail just also um, shows like. You know, you have to be intrigued. It has to be eye catching. It's a t- thing is with YouTube, like a lot of stuff, like just go and look what's working for other people. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a hundred percent going to work for you, but there's a reason why I wouldn't necessarily say like, look at the anomalies. I wouldn't say, look at Mr. Beast. I wouldn't say, look at, pe- there's, you know, look at the general people, like what's working. Cause you're always going to have the exceptions to the rule. Yeah. So I wouldn't necessarily base your predictions on like the exception to the rule. I would base it on like generally what's working for for the most people in that niche it's it's this it's that it's whatever but yeah i think i think on youtube is like you get instant feedback so one sec <sighs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah talking too much i'm not used to it um so i think the great thing about youtube is you get instant feedback do you know what I mean? Like, imagine if you were making a documentary and you made it for like four months to put it out to realize that no one really likes the way you edited it or the way you presented yeah. it or whatever. Yeah. You, you film a video, you post it, even when you're editing it. This is why I say, like, in the beginning, I encourage like people who are doing YouTube to not necessarily like what you're doing with the podcast and stuff, but at least if you're just doing like a single camera thing, like edit it yourself. Because when I edit myself on, I figure out oh well i 
need to stop looking off camera like that. Oh, I need to stop um, doing that because that's a bit weird or whatever. Like, you know, you can make loads of changes, put it out, see what happens. Da, da, da. Like, did that thumbnail work? Did that not? Like, it's just instant feedback. Like a lot of people have to, for their business, they might have to go and make a product for like a yeah. year, spend a million quid before they get any feedback. And like, that's a terrible idea. So, yeah. I think, I think the thing, that, the thing I love about the whole YouTube thing for a lot of people is, and why everyone should be creating YouTube videos at some form or another or being creative is the fact of it's leverage, it's leverage work. So I can, I can come and I can bring all my energy to, to the podcast today with you and just, just send it the best. I'm doing the best that I can with what I've got in the time that we're in. I'm asking the best questions I can right now. Yeah. yeah. And I'm doing what the best that I can right now. And I, and I can bottle that energy and that energy can live on and it can impact people again and again and again. Yeah. And I don't have to be involved with it. And that's, and that's the beauty I think of leveraged media, which is what we're, we're talking yeah. about here. And I think every business owner, everybody who wants more for themselves this year, if you just made a goal, even if that's like for Instagram, even if you just went on your st- story per day and just started to record yourself and started to become confident in that, it should be yeah. a goal of yours to start putting your face and your ideas and your videos out to the world on whatever platform suits yeah. you. But, but everyone's goal should be to do that more because the more you show yourself to the world, the more the world can show itself to you, the more you can get paid, the more yeah. everything happens for you. I've got, actually, I've got two things that I want to say off the back of that. One, when I first started YouTube, I could <coughs> not talk to camera. I was so bad at it. So before I started YouTube, when I knew I wanted to do it, so what I did is I filmed myself on my phone every day. I didn't send it to anyone. I didn't show anyone. I literally would just like uh, vlog you know, talking absolute nonsense just to get comfortable with it. Then I started doing stories on Instagram. Then I started making like little short videos on Instagram. So Instagram was like my training ground for doing it. Um, so I just, you know, you've got to just, if I had la- like, this is where labels are bad. If I had labeled myself, labeled myself, I'm not good on camera. You just disempowered yeah? yourself. I've just disempowered myself. I I wasn't good on camera, but I was like on the other side of this really uncomfortable thing that I'm finding really difficult is the life I want. So I'm going to get good. I'm not the best on camera. I don't care. Like I'm doing what I want to do. Like you don't, this is the thing as well. It's like, you don't even have, you don't have to look at, oh, the best person, right? You might get there one day, but you can just be like, I can still do this. Do you know what I mean? Like sometimes it can be really overwhelming to be like, well, I'm never going to be like Mr. Beast. I'm not going to start. Why? Why not? Like you, you can still be making an incredible living from YouTube, even if, and you might be doing it in some random niche of something that you're really passionate about. Yeah. The other thing about leverage is one of the things that really opened my eyes. I went on this video shoot. I was cameraman on the video shoot and, um, wait, let me think about this. So, yeah. So I went on this shoot when, before I started YouTube and I was just a cameraman, right? But I was a good cameraman and had all the kit and I got paid pretty well for what I did and uh, we were on the shoot for Tesco's mobile and there was this guy I don't know he must be like 19 years old on the shoot and he was like the talent on screen talent and he basically had to pretend to be like this kung fu master or whatever and he he was horrendous like he could not act or do he couldn't even do we couldn't even get him to move his hands in a way of like a karate chop he was like i couldn't figure out i'm like who is this guy that oh, he's a youtuber i'm like well why is he here doing this job like he's not he's not good at this job like what's going on why don't we just get an actor i oh, know because because he's got because he's got a big following on youtube i'm like how much is he being paid like 20 grand i'm like he's being paid more than everyone here we're all highly skilled right mm. we're all at the top of our kind of like skill set he is the worst person for this job ever and he's being paid more than everyone here that's leverage yeah then i was like okay there's only so far i'm going to get in this career he's leveraged his audience he's here not because he's the best at the job he's here because he's got an audience like yeah and that's an what, audience that's what leverage is do you know what i mean like everyone else there was like super talented at what they were doing. He's obviously talented at something, whatever, I think he was a gamer or something, but he was really, really bad at trying to do this acting, like horrendous. And I was like, that, but he's got it figured out. Who's the, who's the idiot here? But if you hadn't, me. <laughs> but if you hadn't gone to that, that, that whole lesson and that whole culmination there that you've just spoken about wouldn't have happened. Yeah. So it's like, it's, 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 it's 
there's a reason that everything happens in your life and there's a reason you're learning these lessons and why people come in and show you different things. Yeah. Like if you hadn't have been there that day, that would that that little piece there, that critical piece wouldn't have dropped in and you wouldn't have been able to go on this whole other journey. It's like it's a yeah. pretty critical part, isn't it, when you yeah. think about it? Cause it's mad because you can look back and you can be like, all the little things that happened, had one of those not happened, you might not have got to where you needed to go, but they all just kind of happened and it's like the serendipity of life. But and that, you have to, the thing is, the main thing is you've got to put yourself out there. You have to get comfortable at being uncomfortable. You have to put yourself in positions where you feel uncomfortable, but you're putting yourself in an opportunity because that's what luck is, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's when opportunity meets preparation. And if you're prepared and you're ready and the opportunity comes along, you can take it and people will say you were lucky, right? Had I not put in all the hours for, if I had not put in all the hours of like uh, figuring out what works for me like in productivity, if I had not put in all the hours of learning camera editing what makes a good video had i not put in all the hours of uh with my family and having a beautiful family that isn't dysfunctional you know we then when the opportunity come round and all three of those things kind of added into being a youtuber yeah people will say you're lucky cool if that if that's what luck is then that's that's great but you have to put yourself out there it's it's you, you what, what you're saying is so true it is you know, it's like if I hadn't have gone to Australia, if I hadn't have done the healing that I had to do, and then obviously I got frustrated one time when I was back in England three years ago, and then and then finally decided to act upon the vision I had for myself and the podcast. And then, you know, it's like even the chance that I'm taking now, you know, the fact of like, you know, spend a load of money upgrading the quality of everything that we're doing, but then also change my whole country because I realised that, what's got me to the put to the here won't get me to the next level. So I've yeah. got to change it. And it's, and there's a thread of conversation for this whole podcast and through a lot of my podcasts, which is all about radical honesty. And I still believe radical honesty is our two words that you should all be looking to add more of in your life. It's like, if you can add more radical honesty in every area of your life, ask yourself why you believe that. Why is that my narrative? Why does that impact me? Okay, where did I pick that up? Is it even true? If you can ask these questions in your life, you can free yourself from so much different stuff and allow yourself to get to any level you want to get to in life. But you just got to be willing to ask yourself the hardest possible questions, in all, which is which is what you've done. Because the question, the hard question you were asking that day is, here I am, stood here as a cameraman. I'm a talented, talented guy, stood here. This guy who I perceive, perceive, because society's taught me that this guy's less talented than me. He's t society taught you that at school that that guy was less talented but that guy's not less talented is he yeah. because he had the, his talent was building an audience to be able to yeah. command 20 grand yeah. but but at the time he wasn't talented at uh, pretending at, to be a kung fu master yeah which is the job that he was employed to do but he wasn't employed because of his skill set he was yeah. employed on that job because of the leverage that he had with his audience and that is when the penny starts to drop exactly you know? and, and the thing is as well what i love about now this day and age right is that where before you needed there was all these gatekeepers the, the gatekeepers are gone so if i wanted if me and my family want our own reality tv show if that's what you want to sort of like say our youtube channel is like we would have to go to tv producers and jump through hoops da -da, probably just to be rejected all we needed to do was go to argos or jessup's or whatever and buy a 500 pound camera and start go home shooting. and film and edit and upload there's no gatekeeper. The audience then decides they like it. Perfect. Now you've got leverage to be able to yeah. get onto TV. Did you see that guy, um, you know, Bugsy Malone? Yeah. There was this guy on TikTok <coughs> and uh, he's like a producer, but for, I don't know much about him, so I might be wrong. But from what I can tell, like he's not a producer, like working with artists. He's just a producer in his bedroom. And he made this beat and he said, he said, everyone tag Bugsy Malone, get him to do a verse for it because it, it will be sick. And he'd done this beat and don't get me wrong, the beat was good. So it was, you know, you, ha you do have to have some skill and talent and hard work and whatever. But Bugsy Malone heard that, went to his house, did a verse on it. They ended up making a music video. It's one of, I mean, I f it's like the song's amazing. It's got millions of views on YouTube and, and on Spotify. And now this guy, the guy put himself out there and there was no gatekeeper. He didn't go to Universal Records or Sony Music or whatever and say, I'm a producer and I want to work with these artists. And they said, no, no, go away. He literally put himself out there. Here I am on TikTok, Bugsy Malone, do a verse. He did it. Of course, that's there is some luck in that, but there's also a lot of, you know, 
it's you know that's that's what I love about it. We're, just remove <coughs> the gatekeepers. Yeah, you you just literally like you you're removing all your barriers, and that's what I want the podcasts like these to do for you guys is is to remove all the barriers to your bullshit, so that you can push through and that you're going to achieve yeah. what you got to achieve at every level of your life. Yeah, that is literally l- l- drop whatever veils that you have whatever layers you have, like an onion that you need to drop, just start to cut these layers off, peel them back, start to see who you are, start to understand yourself more and start to, maybe some of you should give yourself a break. Maybe me and Joel should give ourselves a break sometime yeah. too. But like, you know, maybe some of you should give yourself a break. There's times to put pressure on. There's times to give yourself a break. And you, you, know, you need to know, you need to need know, a bit of both. you need to know what season you're Carrot playing. Carrot and in. stick, isn't it? So it's like, yeah. Before we go, I want to just touch upon this clothing brand. What's your vision for that in the next 12 to 24 months? Is it something you're building to to, to obviously exit in the future or what's what's the goal with it? So the the goal <coughs> so the goal for Devu is that it will be at the moment it's a women's it's women's wear, but we might do unisex. But right now the goal is that it's the biggest um you know UK British women's wear brand. Um and I think we can do it for for our audience, right? And no, not for our audience, for our demographic. Obviously, there's different, you know. But I think we're going to be the number one streetwear brand for women in the UK, and that's my that's my main goal, really. Where, however, that looks, you know. Obviously, we have like financial goals for it, um, but you know, I'm, and I'm confident, confident that we're going to hit them. And in in the future, who knows? Like, we don't have any plans to sell Devu. Um, but it's nice to know that we're building something that we it's could a saleable asset. We yeah, could yeah. sell it, or yeah. we could get investment, or we could sell part of it, or you know, you can't do that with a YouTube channel. So it's like we're just we're confident in what we're doing that we're creating some security for our kids in our future, and we have other ideas and things that we're going to be doing in the future. We have another business that we're working on. Can you talk s- about it? I nah. can't talk about it right now, but yeah, yeah. we'll talk about it in the good. future. Yeah. And it's going to be bigger than Dave Vu. That's the crazy thing. It's, even, it's going to be I, even I, bigger. I so. have I have no doubt about it. I can see you smile when you talk about <laughs> it. I'm sure we'll talk about it off camera. But, may I ask this question a lot in different ways on the, on many of my podcasts. But I'm going to ask you it in a little bit of a different way today. If you check out the world tomorrow and you had to personally leave a pearl of wisdom for your daughter's that helps them take their life further forward from this guidance, what would it be? Oh, that's, I find that, I find these on the spot questions so difficult. There's so much that I'd want to say. What you can, I want to say? You, you can't, you can't leave anything physical. It has to be, what? You have to, to like wisdom for them. One piece of advice that would carry them in good stead across their lives from that moment forward. That's a really difficult question. I think, I don't know. I honestly really struggle with these questions. I'd say like it's really important to have good mentors, whether you're talking about business or whether you're talking about relationship or whether you're talking about good influences in your life. And I'd want them to always, if I checked out tomorrow, I would want them to always be in good company with people that are building them up. And also that are giving them good examples. And I think that's so important. Whether that's in business, having a mentor in business, whether that is as a parent you're a mentor, whether that's, you know, grandparents or whatever. I think I think if I if I wasn't here and I looked down and I saw them around people that were bringing them down and being negative and toxic or they didn't they were lost, you know, lost in life. You know, I wanted to say like get guidance, get good people around you, get a mentor with whatever you want to do I think that would probably be my best That's piece of advice because if I left I'm their mentor I'm gone so what I want is another mentor to not just give them one piece of wisdom but give them wisdom every day yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I like That's that. the best thing I like that. Them, yeah, yeah yeah I think yeah. I think we all need mentors and guides in life at different parts different stages and those mentors and guides may only need to be one step ahead of you at that particular time when you're needed yeah. to be guided so I hope and again yeah talking about this gatekeeper thing you might not have anyone in your life that you can turn to as a mentor and you might not be on anyone's radar like that you could get a mentor but you can listen to podcasts like this Frankie Lee can be your mentor he doesn't know who you are but he's mentoring you on this podcast now 
and his guests are mentoring you. So there's no excuse not to have in some form or another positive mentors in your life and until you find one, a physical one that's going to yeah. help you and yeah. guide you. So, this, yeah. th- this is this is my hope and my dream for, for this and I, I speak uh, about it a lot. It's like, you know, I just want all of you that listen to this to win at life and that's why um, it's done the way it's done and that's why it's, you know, it's where it is because I've, I believe that it's... I don't believe that you listen to this. I believe you feel it. That's what I believe the honest difference is. Yeah. I believe you feel what I feel, what the content I produce, I believe you feel it. And that is what I want you. I want you to feel it because if you feel it, if you hear what I'm saying and you feel what I'm saying and you hear what the guest's saying, like Joel, and you feel it, then I can create a shift in your mindset and your life that allows you to move forward. And that's what I want. That's all I want. And I hope you guys have got some mad value from this podcast for me and Joel today. I hope it takes you, there's, there's things in here about ADHD and other stuff and other lessons that Joel's spoken about. I hope they take you to a new level. It's important, it's really important that when you listen to content and when you get people like Joel on here, that you implement at least one thing in your life that you've heard from this podcast because then it makes it worth consuming. And that's all I want. And if the value has been added in this podcast, the only cost to entry that I ask you all do is that you go and share it on social media. You go and post it in the girls or lads WhatsApp group. You go and put it out there for me so that I can get more people listening to this rather than the podcast that I feel put out the hero's journey, which actually don't take you any further in life. That is all I ask from you. I've loved having you on, Joel. I really appreciate you, mate. And I know you're going to smash it, mate. And I just one thing I want to say to you on a personal level before I leave this podcast is just realize that you've smashed it in life and you've impacted your daughters and your and your missus in ways that they've probably not even said to you until they probably listened to this. I appreciate it, bro. I do. I Guys, really enjoyed it. Thank much you. Much love. Ciao. Awesome. That was good. How was that? I really enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs>